Knockoff Nation, we're back on board here for episode 43. Chris, Danny and Briss checking in. Cheers, boys. Friday. Feel, always feels good to Friday. Friday's always a good been, feeling. Been a bit under the weather this week, so excuse the voice if I'm uh, extra nasally. But uh, on deck this evening with first-timer to the knockoff, but uh, he's no stranger to podcasting, coming fresh off the uh, Grant Atkins podcast. Welcome, Tom West. Yeah, a little, little different to uh, that one, I think this will be. Uh. D- different, different, <laughs> different, maybe a more relaxed vibe. Was that a Grant Atkins for uh, the listeners at home that don't know him? He's a former NRL referee. He's current, probably, current. Current, yeah. right. Doing the World Cup right now. Is eh? he really? Yeah. Right. So, mate, sorry, Grant. All, all, all due respect. But um, he, had his, he has his own podcast. And you're a guest on that because Grant Atkins, being a sports official himself, interviews sports personalities from from around Australia and the world. And Tom comes on tonight as a Australian representative as a baseball umpire. Uh, so you've done games in America. So in in short, Tom spent six months in Australia and six months in America. You're basically an endless summer sort of character. Oh, that's brilliant. I can't get enough of it. So this is my... Uh, I just got uh, confirmation that I will be going back next year. Not really sure where yet, but... It'll be my, my sixth year over there, so fantastic. Yeah, getting in the thick of it. So Atkins hit you up as a sports official. Did did he email you direct? Yeah, or no, it... he actually emailed uh, Baseball Australia. So oh, fantastic podcast. If you ever check want to check it out, it's uh, it's called View from the Middle, and uh, he interviews uh, NRL referees, EPL referees, AFL, mm, rugby union, basketball, right. netball. Like oh, he's got. Do you know who Les Fear, old boxing famous boxing right. referee? Like he's got. Got everyone, great bloke as well, and um, oh, fantastic insight. Like we don't get enough of that mm. with officials. Like you just sort of, especially like the average fan, you know, like the referee screws your team. You hop on Facebook and and like the the biggest bogans, you know, uh, my team got screwed. Comment on it, you know, mm. and these blokes aren't accountable. All mm. this type of stuff, and like there's so much more like behind the scenes. Yeah, there it is. There, yeah, there's just so much that goes on, like the complexities of it and, and different sports and the way they handle their officiating is is interesting. Where did it, uh, umpiring started for you as a teenager? So was it something that you'd transitioned to? You started playing baseball, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah, I think um, my parents uh, were really involved in club stuff growing up. Like they were massive into the volunteering, like on the committee, helping out, that type of stuff. And... Uh, or always down at the club and kind of got forced on, into helping out and umpiring was like, oh, yep. come help umpire this T-ball game. You know, yep. like I was probably nine or ten when right. I first did it, or maybe ten or eleven. So but you, even at that point, you, your parents had realised you weren't going to make it as a player, <laughs> so tried to just steer you in Yeah, 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 exactly. I'll tell you what, the hell of a T-ball. Like, it's still, it's still being, <laughs> they were the best of them. Nah, nah, so... <laughs> no, uh, probably... Got sort of like semi-interested around 12, went first sort of proper course um, and then did it for a bit, a little bit of pocket money. Um, it's funny. It's like, well, what do you enjoy about it? Like, it's kind of a weird thing to enjoy. Like, I think it's it's like doing a, a job. You know how you... Some, Take a some, lot even of pride most, in it. Yeah, even the most mundane thing. Like, if you do it well... You can take a lot of, as you said, take a lot exactly. of pride in it. And yeah. I think with umpiring, the more and more you go up with it, it's that search for perfection, mm. which is pretty much impossible in officiating. Like, particularly baseball, where, um, like, you watch these blokes in the major leagues and, like, they'll they'll score, like, 99.5% in a game, which is astronomical, but it's almost impossible. And I don't mm. know why. Like, that's just the mental capacity of humans, I guess, like... Otherwise, why why doesn't someone hit a thousand, you mm. know, a hundred percent of the time, or, or something like that? Why mm. doesn't anyone maybe but the don, you know, go a hundred? It. It's just sort of like a the a, human a, factor. Mm. No, yeah. You can't be perfect at anything. It's almost. crazy though because it's not even really a physical thing. It's like if for some reason your brain just goes, "All right, I'm gonna mm. get this one wrong," mm. you know. Like it's mm. just so it's that search for perfection, getting as close as you can as possible, and. And yeah, as you said, just taking pride in a good job, and and obviously now like it's there's more to it than that. Like I'm getting paid to travel around the states, and 
um, the the carrot of making the mm. like it's good money. If I can get to the the major leagues, those guys up make up to about half a million dollars a year. Fantastic! So yeah, absolutely. I'd do man. it for that coin, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. put myself out. If, if I could, I would too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was in. That was in. Mate, a, a rough estimate, like we touch. You touch on perf- uh, perfection there, and that's something. The World Series has just com- concluded. Houston Astros get their first World Series championship, and phenomenal series. And I've Working during the day, it's tr- tricky with American sports where you love it so much, but we're just in the wrong time zone here for it, where you're at work when all these major events are happening. So I got in the habit of going home just on YouTube on the smart TV and just watching the highlights packages each night. And they bundle together sort of 10 to 15 minutes worth of highlights out of this game that goes for you know, in excess of four hours. And the, the officiating in baseball to the almost to the inch is just phenomenal. Where The example that I use where I was watching it, on the couch, and a bloke got thrown out at first. Like, hits a, hits a ball into the shortstop. It's a mad scramble. Like, hits a little, like, one hop in. He picks it up, throws it. And the bloke's sprinting to first base, and it's quite literally not even half a second of time that it's in the glove to the uh, runner getting on base. Bang, he calls him out to the point where you see NRL officiating on the sideline, and half the time they're too scared to rule yeah. what's the fucking... Was he in? Was he out? Was that a forward pass? Was it... You can train the human eye in baseball and that search for perfection but these guys can see it to the inch. He made the call there on the spot and the TV validated it. It's like, no, he did get that correct. So right. do, do they, can they go to the same system as ours in terms of they've got a video ref that can yeah, check calls so if they're not the, sure? In the major leagues, they do have pretty much every call except balls and strikes um, can be reviewed nowadays uh, by video. And it's sort of similar to, uh, you know, rugby league where they have a... Uh, uh, overruled, confirmed, or sort of like a um, rest call. Sort yeah, of thing. like a yeah. I, I forget it, what it's called, but like um, it's that close. Sometimes it's so bang bang, like dead heat, where they break it down to the the hundredth of a second, and it's just a tie. And you're like, bloody hell! All right, we'll we'll have to go with that. Mm. And but it's funny you should say that. Like they're so good, so often yet get so vilified. And like I'm yet I've made maybe in excess of a million calls while I'm barring, and I'm yet to have a fan stand up and go. Fuck, that was a great call. Yeah, well done, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when do the refs ever get clapped off? It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's thankless work officiating like that. Though. But um, at what point did you did America come calling? Was it sort of were you doing ABL Australian Baseball League before going to the states, or that sort of came hand in hand? Went and got the experience there to bring home. Yeah, sort of hand in hand. I guess as you sort of said, realized I was shit pretty young. Playing <laughs> 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 that, play, that is. Uh, so I um, I went to uni here, um, always been like super like involved in sport, loved sport, even if I wasn't like a high performance athlete at it. So I went to uni, did business in uh, sport management and marketing and uh, throughout that probably started doing a bit more umpiring, like men's division one, a bit more, uh, bit more often. And um, they were sort of like, oh, look, you're pretty decent. Like what we'll do is we'll pay your way to the States to go – to, and it sounds a bit silly, they have like an umpire camp every January in Florida. There's actually two of them and they send about, in total, about 300 people go there every year and uh, they pick the top 10%, about the top 30 or so. So, um, finished uni, uh, went over there the January after I finished my undergrad. Thank God they paid, I was so so broke, just out of uni. Mm. And um, went over there and, uh, yeah, they it's a five-week thing. Uh, five week camp, and you know, in the mornings you're doing theory and rule book stuff and, and and whatnot, and then in the afternoon you're doing training and yeah. simulated games and that type of stuff. And so they're assessing you on that, and like you're always on the stage, like it'll be like, all right, you know, West, you're up next, you know, and like there's a hundred other potential umpires, like they're all critiquing you. Like mm. that's the hardest mm. you'll have umpires mm. is when you're umpiring in front of other umpires because yeah. you'll do stuff in a game where fans and players mm. won't pick that up, but if you mess up the tiniest thing, they're going, oh, yeah, you've just yeah. cooked that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and you see, like, we talk about it, you know, guys dying, you know, per mm. se, where guy blows a massive call in umpire camp. And, oh, there's your chance of a career gone. See you yeah, later, mate. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. So, like, that pressure's on you every day and manage just to, you know, fool them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Fake it to you, mate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and then after that, um, flew back to Australia, had to go to another two week. Uh, evaluation course that was hosted by Miling Baseball. Then they put me into a league. Uh, I didn't get my visa though um, until the following year, so I had about 15 months between camp before I started umpiring in 2013. And during that time, worked for Baseball Queensland as a development officer, 
best 15 months of my life. Went nice. out to Outback Towns, taught kids how to play baseball, travelled all around. Like, oh, so good nice. as a, you know, 20-year-old kid. And, uh, yeah, 21, which is a good year to be in the States. Mm. Started my career over there <laughs> in uh, in Florida. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, first year over there, probably the only year I could do it, they put me in a league called the Gulf, Gulf Coast League in, in Florida. And it's what they call a complex league. So if you sort of understand, this is how big, like, baseball, professional baseball is so much bigger and and it's – Probably the EPL is – sorry, the, the the English football league system is probably the only thing you can almost compare it to, mm. whereas there's Major League Baseball and then under that there's seven other levels yeah, of professional so baseball. Right. And yeah. Of all, professional. Of like, professional. Yeah. Wow. Well, and they're all linked. Yep. Like it's not even independent leagues. They're not like just runoffs. Like each team, each major league team, like the Yankees, for example, they'll have six feeder minor leagues. Yeah, yeah, six feeder clubs and they all line up. Like you go from here – you go from the bottom tier to you know rookie rookie from short season to A to double A to triple A and all the way up. So it's crazy. And so when you go to the Gulf Coast League, um, uh, it's in Florida and it's what they call a complex league. So most of uh, the international free agents, so they're Dominicans, they're Venezuelans who they sign like a dime a dozen. Um, go, they go play in this league and it's at midday. In the middle of like summer Florida. in Florida, oh, and it is 115. Yeah, every oh. day. It's it's um well even it's not even 115. It's probably like 100, but humidity is like 95. So mm. Florida's Florida's like our equivalent of Darwin. Yeah, what? probably Darwin or Cairns. Right. Yeah, just yeah. you step outside, you're drenched. Right. It's yeah, it's incredible, and that's what I mean. In like, an umpiring year as yeah, well. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, and so like that's a thing. Like if I reckon if it was anything but my first year, you'd be like. I'm yeah, not going to be able yeah. to, but you're so stoked. You're like, I'm a professional. I'll buy. And there's no crowds in the golf course. It's just a complex league, so there's no crowds or anything. Because in the evening they have this thing called the Florida State League. They sort of play in the same stadiums. But yeah, you do that, and uh, so um, the way it sort of works is an umpire. You get evaluated by supervisors about four times, four to eight times in a season, and they critique you down to like they they micromanage the hell out of you. Yeah. Like, I guess what we sort of think when we when you look at uh, officiating as a casual sort of fan is like, he blew that call, he needs to get better. Mm. And it's like, well, how do you get there? Like it's – judgment is a result of lots and lots of little things. Just like, you know, like if you're playing cricket and you get bowled out, you're like, oh, I'm shit. How, well, how do you get better? Like you can't just be like, well, get better. You know, you have hitting coaches that go, mm. all right, you know, lift your front exactly. elbow, you know, mm. fix your stance, do this, do that. You know, same with golf swings, all that type of stuff. And the same applies for officiating. Like you're in the wrong spot, so you need to be in this spot. Your timing's too quick. You need to let process in your head, you know. And even like um, stuff that is not even really quantifiable, like demeanor. And um, wow. like the like way the way you posture yourself, yeah, and dead set. Like, that. like yeah. it is actually, and it is like when you think of it. Like, have you ever run into like, say you you you're taking a beer back from the bar, and uh, you got your head down and you bump into someone, and the first thing you like, you're like, fuck this bloke right here, and you look up, and your first reaction, if he's a massive bloke, you're like, oh, I'm not gonna say anything. Oh, sorry, mate. If it's if it's someone who doesn't you know look sure of themselves, you're like, oh, you know, fucking watch yourself. You know, yeah. like you're more sort of. Uh, you coward punch him. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Brisbane Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as their back is turned, you yeah. you just king hit them. <laughs> I don't know if they're yeah. smaller than you. Yeah. <laughs> it's the one they don't see that always hurts them. <laughs> but yeah, it's an intangible thing that you just got to learn like what works for you. And like oh, when I first started, I was a real skinny guy. I mean, I'm still not a big bloke, you know, but I sort of had to work, you know, to sort of make yourself, your field presence a bit known, you know, and without overcompensating mm. because that's another thing. Yeah. If you start just yelling at blokes, people are like, who the fuck is this? Because mm. you know? there is a lot of that that goes to it. There is, you see baseball, there's screaming matches between yeah. the officials and the managers will oh. come off the bench. And it, it's almost like there's a, bit of like WWE theatrics theater, to that. Yeah, yeah. Theater, where it is, that's the entertainment side of it, where they are pissed off, but they'll ham it up and they'll throw their hat on the ground and stuff. Like it you're is, only, it's unbelievable. You're only saying the other day that there's, if you swear back as an umpire, you'll get fined. Like they'll hit you in the pocket yeah. if someone's there mouthing off at you, if you can't say any sort of swear word. or right. blah, blah, blah. It's dead set like customer service when you're dealing with an angry customer, but <laughs> they're literally yeah. spitting in your face. Like It's, <laughs> it's like, I, I understand, sir, but you know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but yeah, and I guess it, it must, it has to be, I haven't heard anything yet like to con- 
big on the contrary to this, but it has to be the only sport in the world where you can stop the game just to argue with the official. Mm. Like, could you yeah. imagine that happening like in another Craig sport? Craig Bellamy? Yeah, you wouldn't, hey, you wouldn't Bellamy get him just the comes field, down right? from yeah. the box and, you know, like starts... <laughs> It'd go yeah. for four hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, well, he does it in the press room anyway. So, <laughs> but, you know, like... So, so that's that, an actual rule in baseball. Yeah, yeah. yeah where the manager it. can just come down and berate the ref. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. So... They, there is, like, boundaries and, like, they talk about stuff called the... Ma- so, you ad- you can eject someone, you know, if they cross that, that line and they talk about um, well, sort of the magic words. Like, oh, he must have said the magic words. That was a quick ejection. And uh, the magic words are actually you or your. Like, as soon as they make it personal, that's, that's, that's where the line is. Right. So, they can say, you know... That call that was call, rubbish. Or that call was yeah. fucked, you know... You know that you you know like that that was fucked up. You got that wrong. You know da 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 da. But as soon as he goes, you're terrible. Yeah. So he can he can swear night and day at you, and as soon as he says you're terrible, oh oh you're done. Toss. Awesome. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I've had right. like oh, we were talking about it today. Like that was softest ejection ever. Someone someone turned around like struck out and looked at me. He's like. I think you're terrible. I said, all right, mate, you're done. <laughs> Back your bags. And they understand. Like the, crowd, like the manager for that team had been around for like 20 years and he comes out he's like, what did he say? I said, he, 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 he said I thought he was terrible. I thought he was going to chew me out. He's like, how ah, could you throw someone out for that? And he's gone, oh, all right, and then walked away, you know, but like... He, yeah. he understands the etiquette of the game. Like right. they know where the line is and as you move up through the ranks, they all know how to handle themselves mm. and they won't cross that line. They'll come agonisingly close to that line and they know they're on that yeah. line and then they'll stop. It's just... Right. Yeah, so... Uh, and yeah. that's it. You don't you don't want to be taking good players out of the game, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, if, if, if especially in this day and age, you know, like if you've got your best team on the field and you're Jonathan Thurston or whatever is... You know, doing late hits on people yeah. and, getting set and getting put in the bin. Like, that's that's a disadvantage to your team for the next 10 minutes. Mm. That's what that is. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, like, you hear commentators like, oh, you know, you can't throw this guy out. It. It's this game, this game. But really, the accountability, as I said, those guys know where the line is. The accountability comes back down to them. Like, the manager will be chewing them out. If, they, if it's a tied ball game and he goes, you're fucked or whatever and, and gets run, the manager's going to know about it. He's not... He might chew out the umpire at the time, like, how can, you know, this is fucking mm. bullshit. And he might stand up for him. But after the game, you better believe, like, he's going to go in the dressing room. It's like, that's fucking yeah, selfish. You Pull your head in, mm. you know? Mm. So there is a, uh, there's a couple of guys in the major leagues like that right now. Um, yeah. That, that, that mouth off sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure if, you know, couple you of did a couple of, uh, don't want to incriminate myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might be officiating these guys one day. Like, uh, best, best not to say too much. There'd be yeah. some big units too. Mm. Oh, massive. Massive units. So what would be the average like weight of a baseball player? I guess it depends on the position. Yeah, it really does. Um, because, yeah, it's a sport that, it's a bit like cricket, like any sort of body shape you yeah. really play. Like, hit, you get your big, big blokes shot. like DH first baseman that mm. just crush the ball and, you know, try and hit home runs and not try and have to run it out. Then you get your centre fielders who are all about speed, putting mm. the ball down and play and beating it out and stealing bases. So, And then you get like these, you know, Asian and Hispanic guys in the middle of the infield who just have like these silky, you know, mm. smooth. Little like they're the halves in a game of footy. Yeah, sort of thing. exactly. Right. So it really it is a bit like league. You know, you mm. got your wingers. You it know, is. that's your outfitters. You got your playmakers. And and uh, Wait, we're talking about um, sort of body types for positions. There's some statistic where there hasn't been an African American catcher in the major league since the '60s. Really? Mm-hmm. Where they've like does like hundreds of African American players. That have all gone on to have hugely successful careers, but just not as catches. But just not as catches. Wow, mm. oh, I think incredible. that's right. You could probably Google. I don't that know if it's yeah. I don't know if it's the sixties. It's yeah. it's a long, yeah. long time. Like oh, major yeah. league, like it's just I don't know. They Str- yeah, strange. Better at, yeah. It's a bit like the quarterbacks in the NFL. Like you take mm. out Russell Wilson, and it's like that's it. You know, gee, it's yeah, all it's, it's all white guys. It's all white guys. Tall yeah. white guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like six, yeah. six five. Exactly. It's sort big. of sort of the criteria in the NFL if you're. If you're short, you're just not going to make yeah. it. Oh, so can, same so with ice, good, ice hockey as well. You up over, uh, over your front line and exactly all that sort right. of stuff. Yeah. Exactly right. You just, um, had to share the same shower block as a couple of um, <laughs> couple of the big boys. <laughs> well, that's, <are>. a, <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's, that's a good story. So uh, so this is in the Gulf Coast League. That was in that that first year. Your little uh, little skinny Tom was uh, <laughs> 21 <laughs> year old Tom. Yeah, just <laughs> overwhelmed. <laughs> anyway, um, usually you get your own locker room, um, but it was a complex league, not quite as uh, uh, stringent as as the crowd leagues that aren't bought from then on in. 
and at the Detroit Tigers facility in Lakeland, Florida, they uh, they had like an umpire's sort of area. Like it was still in the same clubhouse, but it wasn't really cordoned off. But the sh- there was no shower. You had to shower with the players. And uh, <laughs> and so Excuse me, fellas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and as a you know, it's you got to shower. Like you've just umpired three hours in 110, 95 percent. You just drenched. You don't want to hop in the car. And uh, as I mentioned before, the Gulf Coast League just full of uh, young Hispanic guys, like particularly Dominicans and Venezuelans. Yeah. And, and those Dominican guys are like, like sort of the they're they're the dark like the real sort of big darker. Uh, uh, Sort of Almost a, a Cuban type of Yol, yeah. Yol Romero esque, yeah, like. right? Yeah. From the Carib- Caribbean side of mm. uh, Cuba or something. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of Chris uh, Gale look alike. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Not blokes you want to shower with. Twenty-one-year-old <laughs> 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 Aussie from Redcliffe. So, uh, so now, nah, yeah, one day got my kit off and uh, good on you, man. Yeah, you have, you have to <laughs> absolutely, man. Yeah, shout out to yeah. what, what was that episode thirty-nine? You blokes yeah. were talking about. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, uh, no Samoans in there. No. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's a all in the undies, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, uh, but yeah, no, got got the kill off. And uh, Beeline, there was one other Aussie kid playing for uh, the Tigers at the time. Just Beeline for this bloke. I was like, fuck, <laughs> you know, like. Anyway, dead set got in there. The minute I got in there, he's finished up. I'm like, oh, oh fuck. And then these, like, dead set, like, out of a TV show, these two massive Dominican pitches. They must have been, like, 6'6", six, six, like... You know, two hundred thirty-five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, you know, all all three legs of them just roll on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they they start talking. They start glancing like like at me, like talking over the top of me, like just fucking. And like they're speaking Spanish, and but you know when someone's speaking about you in another language. Yeah. And then I'm like, nah, nah, they're, they're probably not. And then all of a sudden, like. The, the Spanish word for umpire, unfortunately, is umpire. So they're just like, you know, on your mama wave or you're not umpire. And you're like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Don't drop the soap. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah so, uh, <laughs> I'd have been fucking out of there yeah. at that stage. So, yeah. yeah, the rest of the time I was in Lakeland, uh, sweaty card. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll just put the town in on the yeah. seat next time. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, all G. <laughs> oh, oh, Mate, you've done a stint recently over there. How what was the statistic on days to games that you'd done over there? Oh, it's it crazy, wor- yeah. It's, it's hard work. Like. Yeah. So in case you don't you, you know, know that much about uh, baseball, I guess, um, they play – Major Leagues is a 162-game season. Like, it's <laughs> a lot crazy. of games. Yeah. Mm. Um, and minor league baseball isn't much less. It's 140. So I do that. So this is 140 games for each team. Yeah, for each team, not like combined. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. 140 mm. games for each team in a season. And they play that in, I did that in about 100, I think it was 153 days. So, And each game goes for three to four hours potentially or? Yeah, and the league, yeah. definitely the league I was in, bit of a windy league, a lot of home runs and stuff. And right. California league, God. And, so uh, you, you're in California Yeah, for that's this where team? I was this year, California league, which is high California. A. So if we talk about those, what, seven levels, um, it's the, Fourth, fourth level. So I got to go double A, triple A, major leagues from here. Okay, and mate. Well on the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. In deep now. Mm. So, um, yeah. So 150, 140 games, 153 days. So you had day off like once a fortnight. So it's all about like it's a real mental grind, especially like game 80, 90, just really, really tough uh, mentally and even physically. Like it just, it's not baseball umpiring's not gonna wear you out in one game, but it'll wear you out in 13 in a row. Mm. Like, it's just mm. constant, like, like a lot of squatting uh, when you're behind the plate and a lot of quick, uh, sharp movements when you're on the bases and just staying on your feet for four exactly. hours as well. Like, um, it, it just gets tiring. And then you've got to be careful when you... Because you want to go to the gym because you, like, you eat like shit. You're living out of... They put us up in hotels, so you've got no home. You're on the yeah. road. A series lasts about three to four games and then you travel the next city. Yeah. And so you're constantly out of hotels, um, you know, you're... So they, living it in and out burger. Well, <laughs> yeah, we got in and out burger vouchers nice. from one of the clubs, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I love, love yeah. in and out Fortunately, oh. breakfast at the hotel, dinner at the ballpark's good because they spend millions of dollars on their minor league nutrition every year. So yeah. rice and beans and chicken, you know, almost every rice, night, you know, like yep. all yeah. that sort of stuff, which is good. But then you eat out lunch and sure enough, you're on the road, you don't know anyone, you go mm. out and you're... 
you drink it. You drink a fair bit of piss. Like, yeah, you would. Small town America, there's nothing else to do. Mm. Like honestly, and you don't, you know, the only other person you know is your partner. And in high A, it's a two umpire system, so it's only you and him. Double A up, it's three umpires. But all oh, right. So you better like the bloke. Yeah. 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 So I got. I've been lucky last couple of years. I had. Got along. I've got along with probably everyone I've worked with. Like and are they from Oz as well? No, nah, I'm the only only Australian that does it. So most of them are Yanks. There's a couple of Canadians. There's one Japanese bloke, a sprinkling of Latino guys. But um, like, yeah, fortunately this bloke single as well, liked a beer. Cool. Shout out Brian if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> no. So he's actually coming over to Australia uh, later in the year. I think I've talked up Australian women a little too much, so we'll see how he goes. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, one one uh, segment on the knockoff, and he's guaranteed to just slave yeah, 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 his yeah. entire time here. So we'll blow up his spot, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Br- bring him on if he wants like ten thousand followers. <laughs> But yeah, you just, I mean, like, if you have a big leg day in the gym, mm. you're screwed for, you don't, you can't recover yeah. because you're just running yeah. and, and squatting all the time. Like, I did it once this year, just went way too hard, like on the hammies or something like that. I can't remember what it was. And I remember just two weeks, I was just like, this shit is, I can't yeah. wait for a day off, you know? Mm. And it's just that, just that small stuff, not having mm. that break. And uh, yeah, you really got to, I guess, balance it out and, you know, sort of, know that there's these peaks and valleys mentally that mm. you just got to power through. And I think that's why a lot of guys drop drop out as well. I'd say about 50% of them get released, 50% life happens yeah. or it's yeah. too hard or they don't think they're moving quick enough. Mm. And uh, yeah. Well, it's interesting that sort of like competitive side of it that you talk about because I've never really thought of refereeing like that before, you know, where you're basically at a training camp and you're sort of competing against all these other guys that you want their spot. And it's really like it draws that parallel to sport in that way, Mm. even though it's like it's a very different endeavor to sport. Like instead of completely being judged on your physical prowess, you're judged on like how sort of tight your intellectual, you know, calls are on different things. And like you add in all those other elements, it's... um. Yeah, it's interesting to think about, eh? Like it, it's good. you're right. It's completely the same as like a job of trying to make it up to the major leagues. Like mm. as a player, mm. you're competing, and the blokes you're competing against are your best mates as well. Like they're yeah. the blokes that are going to back yeah. it up. So is there like is there you know the guys that you partner with? Is there ever any fuckery where guys are trying to you know make you look bad so you they can get your spot type of thing? Is it that cutthroat or uh, maybe early on? I think guys get yeah, a little right. territorial, but. They quickly realise like word gets around pretty quick if you're one of those guys, and they get weeded out. Right, like you can't yeah. make it. There's no way because the average time to make it to the major leagues in the moment it's ten years. It's it's yeah. a hike, and yeah. in ten years, if you're a cockhead, yeah, you, you found out. Yeah, mm. no chance, no chance. Yeah, so there's no coincidence that the guys that make it there, like any time I've hung out with a major league umpire, they know the journey. They're like, oh, come the game, we'll get, you, we'll buy you dinner, buy you drinks after. It's like we went to a game. We're in San Jose this year and um, we had a day game um, and went to the, the Giants, the San Francisco Giants game that evening. And it's about an hour away. And, um, you know, went, out, went in the locker room after, the, got us the best seats in the house and um, went in the locker room after the game and they've got filet mignon and you're just like, fuck, that bet this is better than chicken and rice. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. No sharing with Dominican yeah, players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, and they take us out, you know, they take... They buy us drinks until close, and we're like, "Oh, all right, well, we need to catch our Uber." And they're like, "No, no, no, we'll we'll pay for it. Pay for like the, the hour lift lift ride nice. home." Like, yeah, everyone's on lift over there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, and they're just like, "You need you need anything?" And like, you know, just hooking us up with, you know, like give us some cash as well. Like, hey, tip this is for the clubby. Like, and we're like, we can't say this. Like, no, no, just make sure you look after your clubby all that because you have like a clubhouse attendant that looks after all your needs and stuff as well, which is good, you know, because you don't want to have to be running into mm. the, the home clubhouse looking for a towel or something like that. So yeah. <laughs> it is pretty professional in the sense uh, in the minor leagues you do get looked after and, and all that type of stuff. And That's yeah. cool, man. Yeah, That's yeah. cool that they've got – and they've always got such a good system for everything, you yeah. know. The, the States just always to me – every you know, the times that I've been there anyway, they just seem to have an efficiency to them, you mm. know, like – What age did you move to California? Uh, I went there when I was 19 <laughs> – but, um, but mainly just sort of like around the Los Angeles area we're in and LA. Um, we're in, LA. Uh, in a place called Hermosa Beach. Oh, no. Yeah. So that's where my, my work partner this year, he was from, well, not from Hermosa, he was from uh, um, bloody San Pedro, which is about 
uh, maybe 20 minutes oh, south yeah, of the, yeah. the, the three, what is it, the Tri Beaches or whatever? Redondo Beach. Yeah, Redondo. Yeah, Redondo. Manhattan, Hermosa. <laughs> yeah. But went out, Up to a, San Francisco. Oh, El Segundo. <laughs> 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 yeah. But like this league this year in California, a um, few good teams around LA, one near San Diego, one up in San Jose, and then sort of four dead ass town mm. teams, like just in the middle of the Central Valley, which is just, there's just, it's, Farmyard and it's barren. It's yeah, like nuts, like the Modesto yeah. nuts we were talking about before. Like <laughs> nut farms and and um, well, they grow on trees or they grow, they grow. I still yeah. didn't find out. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but like one of the team was called the Rawhide, which that kind of gives oh. you like a, an idea right there, man. Oh, raw dog, they're bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, we went out and by sale the Rawhide's team by sale. We went out one night. We said, you know, like you go to a small town like that, and you're like, fuck, what do we do out here? There's like two bars. Yeah, like, that's yeah. it. And and mm. we asked, you know, you don't want to end up in the wrong bar. Mm. Fuck. And so this one time, we asked one of the players, we're like, hey, by sale players, like, hey, where's a good place to go out? You know, it's Saturday night. Where should we go? It's like, oh, wear a collared shirt, go down to this bar called, you know, such and such downtown. I say, I say. Brian and I put on our Saturday best and go down uh, downtown Visalia and we walk in and, and it, it, there's some big fucking dudes there. <laughs> like, oh, no, that's all right. You know, you know, it'll be all right. And there's some, there's some good looking chicks there. But like I said, you don't want to pick the, the girlfriend, <laughs> yeah, of, you yeah, know, of, yeah. of the roid head that's sitting <laughs> in the corner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just waiting with a shiv in his sock. Drinking Jack Daniels yeah, in the corner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, hey, anyway. Hey, baby, ever heard of Australia? <laughs> yeah, hey, <I> swear <laughs> not. <laughs> uh, beat it, guy. But we're there, we're there five minutes and all of a sudden just massive brawl breaks out. Just like like the bar, the guys are jumping the bar, like swinging oh. bolt. Like it, it's crazy. Fuck. Like throwing shit at each other, like... Bouncers are trying to drag guys there. The bouncers are like half the size, and you're like, fuck, all it takes is one bloke to pull a gun out. Not you know, where you want to be, where you can buy fucking guns yeah. and ammo from Walmart. And yeah. we, we didn't want any part of it because, like, you cop a punch, isn't up. It might not be your fault. Exactly. You're just, just wrong spot, wrong time. Mm, yeah. Probably going to get released if you rock up the next day with a black eye. Had that happen, oh, I got punched at a bar. Oh, mate, we're not, yeah. you're not the type of We're not about we're, that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's it. it. Like, you're treading on eggshells for 10 years. Like, yeah. you yeah. fuck up once, you're mm. done. That's it. Like, you know, you say the wrong thing on social media. You you do anything like that, they'll dig it up and, and yeah, it's yeah. an image you got to upkeep, obviously. Yeah, you know, like because it comes like, exactly like you were saying before. You know, like it comes with a a degree of you know ethics and moral standing and all that sort of stuff. That seems to be the vibe. Well, that's it. why it's it's interesting because it's a competitive thing, but it but it's ethics and like mm. morally competitive as opposed to you know the the athletes can get away with fucking whatever yeah. whatever they want as long as they don't. Refer to the referee by, you know, himself. calling <laughs> calling him himself, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, geez, you get it, do, uh, have you ever had any? Oh, I mean, obviously you'd have had a whole bunch of just heated exchanges, but oh, crazy but stuff. so but but so what can any close calls like? Yeah, like because like, what I remember, we we had one of our ma- one of our mates who played uh, for Australia, and he was telling me that um, he was uh, at a game or saw a game or uh, I can't remember what the sport? full story. This is in footy, but um, where. The referee got chased off the field. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. We had a uh, probably one sticks out. We had a game in. Uh, it probably wasn't very threatening, but um, early. I think it was my second season. Um, I was in uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, great, great city. If you ever get a chance, like not really mm. a tourist destination, but fantastic city. And um, <laughs> we had a game-ending call, like like packed house in this place, probably. Like standing room only. Most of these minor league stadiums hold about anywhere between five to ten thousand. I think this. Sta- oh yeah, nice. It was about seven thousand there, like solid and standing. Like that's some stand- fucking energy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's cra- and, it's right on, and it's different to the major league parks. They're right on top. Exactly. Of them. Yeah. yeah. Like you've been in the bleachers. Yeah. Like this bloke's yeah. been. I've seen this guy at a mm. Bandits game when I've umpired, yeah. and he's literally in the third baseman's ear yeah. on the pitch. So. <laughs> I'll issue a public apology by the end of this podcast. <laughs> 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 we got to we got to park yeah. that story. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, no. Game ending call and um, like I think they had the the tying run at the winning run at second and it was a check swing like oh no and check swing but you're damned if you do you explain damned. what a, che- a, a check, check swing, swing is, is when please. like a batter starts to swing but stops like halfway through his is swing. that a balk no it's not a no. balk that's something completely different. something yeah. totally a, a different bo- he's like he goes to swing for it but 
backs out. So he is sort of balking a swing, but yeah, balking yeah, is true. something that a pitcher will do in baseball. Right, right, right. So the pitcher will go to he will go to throw and then go to pick someone off, and that's oh, he'll okay. hesitate. Yeah, okay, but, right. but a batter like yeah, so, so he get, starts his swing, sort of gets halfway through and goes, oh, that's a bad pitch. I'm not going to swing at that, you know, and so. You need to determine then whether he did swing, yeah. and it's so gr- like even yeah, the rule is grey. Exactly, the rule yeah. says if you believe he swung, like there's no like <laughs> you know like I believe he did. Like <laughs> like this commentators if the like, shoulder moves past yeah, this point yeah. or it's crazy. Like, like and, that, yeah. and they'll slow it down on VR replay in the, in the major leagues, and some commentators will say, oh, the bat's past the plate or the hands are broken, and like there's it's so grey and it's so hard. Like yeah. like that happens like mm, that, you know, yeah. and. Uh, Anyway, and I said, yeah, he did. I grew a couple of gorilla balls, but they quickly shrunk <laughs> up. I tell you what, like, the crowd just reamed me. This ended the game. They reamed me, and I'm walking off, and, like, there's cans being thrown. Yeah, at that. yeah like, we had security guards yeah. at the field, luckily, just hushing us away. And um, luckily, we went out near the visitors dugout as well because I think the team would have... Um, been sticking us, but I got. A, there's a good story. One of the guys um, that was the head instructor at the umpire school I went to. He said he was umpiring in the Texas League in the 70s, oh. and uh, yeah, Whoa. exactly. Yeah. The Wild West. The Wild West, <laughs> and uh, had a game-ending call. Like whacked a guy out in the game. The crowd is booing him, and they're trying to like grab him, walk into the dressing room. This cop is escorting him, and like he says, he's like, he says to the cop when he gets to the dressing room, he's like, "Mate, thank God I'd be dead if you weren't here." And uh, and the cop turns around and says to him. I tell you what, if I wasn't in uniform right now, I'd be fucking joining them. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, and that's that small town thing. Like, yep. it's so... I've spent... Yeah, like, I'm not on your side, dude. Yeah. Like, It's so different to, like... And that's, tex- that's Texas, though. Like, it's different to the West, the West Coast. Like, that deep south and the Bible Belt and the Midwest. Like, that small town USA is such mm. a different... There's so many subcultures in America. Yeah. Like, and, yeah. And it's a great like, way to say it. Yeah, yeah and, like... I've been to 29 states over there now and wow. every city, like probably about half the cities I've been to are cities you'd never go to yeah. unless you yeah. did that job. Like, yeah. you know, it'd be like telling like some bloke traveling Australia is like, hey, why don't you go out to Quilby? Go to Quilby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. like yeah. must yeah. see Grafton, mate. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 fucking yeah. just yeah. go there. If, if, <laughs> if, you <get> the op- <laughs> if you get the opportunity, spend some time in Grafton. <laughs> 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 Just throw people a bunch of shitty leads yeah. <laughs> so they but, never come back. But you're so right, man. You know, like you Shout get, out Grafton. Yeah, you got yeah, nothing yeah. but love. <laughs> Shout out to, we, we know we got a lot of fans down there. Shout, Shout out Darren Lockyer. <laughs> <laughs> Hometown hero. Uh, you know, he's Roma. Is he? Grafton's in New South Wales. Yeah, Darren Lockyer is Roma. Darren, Darren, Darren Lockyer's yeah, away yeah, on the way to Roma. Yeah. Is it, is there's yeah, a, cu- there's yeah. a couple out that way, isn't there? Isn't Billy Slater out that he's way? He's in Isvale. In Isvale, yeah. that's right. So <laughs> they named the rugby league close. field after it's, it's the two rugby <laughs> league. <laughs> the two rugby league fields out in Isvale. This is when I did the work for baseball. It's Billy Slater, Billy Slater field and Ty Williams field. Really? Ty Williams. Those were two. So, yeah. I think yeah, in Isvale or Tully pretty much get the highest amount of rainfall. Tully. Tully. Yeah. Golden Humber. They got a. They got a. Big gumboot statue, and that's another, right. another town I got to go to right. with that job. And it, the whole town stinks of the sugarcane mill there. Yeah, like, and you just get used to that molasses smell, I guess. Mm. But <laughs> they've dead set got like this, maybe like five, six meter tall gumboot because they're so proud of having the highest rainfall in Australia. It's it's like a Marriott. It's like yep. one of those towns that we got nothing. What do we do? Yeah. Oh, we got a lot of rainfall. Let's cling here. to it. Yeah, so let's cling is to it, that. Is it flat or is it hilly? It's hilly. It's right it up. Like, it has to be. There's like a, have to there's like a right mountainside up. behind, like big rainforest mm. range yeah, behind nice. it. I don't know what range it is, but... Cyclone Larry fucked them oh, over yeah. royally really? up there in that, yeah. yeah. Big, yeah. big, big cyclone shelter mm. at the school that maybe oh, built mate. too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think, <laughs> think it would be post-2010. Yeah. Yeah. When was Cyclone Larry, anyway? 11, yeah. I went there just after it, eh? It was in 2012, I went there, and that whole area up there... Have been just devastated mm. and we're still rebuilding. I think they put a bunch of regulations in place after that, though, so where people had to really build houses to standards and stuff. Now. Yeah, so yeah. Not a blessing in disguise because people got fucked over, but, you know, some good can come of it at least. Yeah. And even even construction sheds that you use on, like, temporary construction sites up north have to have, like, um, be anchored down with concrete blocks that, um, that sit in the, you know, in the earth beside the bloody... Mm. Structure it's, it's interesting about the states though Because I've only ever been to the the big two cities LA and New York And from all reports Like you speak to anybody who's been through the middle of the states Actually I've been, been to Las Vegas? Vegas as well Yeah um, 
a couple of times to LA, spent a fair bit of time, but never really ventured into the, you know, Bible Belt or the Deep South or any into of those. Into America. Sort of, yeah, yeah, into legit America. And you, and you have a tendency, I guess, through sort of like entertainment media and shit to really sort of view the states through this like Hollywood lens. And, you know, yeah. growing up watching Baywatch and everything like that, you sort of, you idolise this Venice mm. Beach type thing. But it's actually when you do meet people from, I was actually on holidays in um, Thailand last year or earlier this year actually, and met a couple from Nebraska and they were like proper, proper fucking Bible Belt. But it was funny because um, the dude actually reminded me of Brycey. He was like this Nebraskan Brycey like version of with his missus who reminded me of Brycey's missus. Is he just a huge bulge in his <laughs> 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 And anyway, yeah, so we're not one of those big Dominican guys. We're, we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting on like a house on fire and like uh, ordering up some prawns and beers and shit like that on the beach out the front of these villas, and um, and it was it was like night and day difference how sort of you know we're, we're completely on the level in every way like making all these jokes and we're the same age and I feel like I'm with you know familiar friends family like level relationship. And it was actually my girlfriend who we started telling jokes and um, and my girlfriend had a couple of these good ones that I think she got off her dad. But, you know, being Australian, we're pretty much like unoffendable when it comes to jokes. So there was a joke. Um, it was actually the girl from Nebraska that first made a joke about like a college girl. And it's like a blonde saying, I, I'd butcher the joke if I tried to do it. But the premise of it is basically like this, you know, blonde chick's a slut and she can't figure out like who she fucked at a frat party or something like that. So she comes out with this sort of, you know, fairly fucking lewd, lewd, lewd joke. joke. Yeah. And then so my girlfriend comes out with a joke about a nun getting raped. Just ups it. <laughs> Just ten, tenfold. Yeah, yeah, See yeah. And, uh, I'm all yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska girl's like, yeah, I can hang with you. And, oh, shit. And, yeah. and the punchline of this joke, she delivered it like impeccably. Like there's yeah. no, nothing wrong with the delivery of the joke. But just absolute crickets like after she's finished <laughs> this joke because she just didn't clock it. And I'm thinking the whole time, hey, you don't realise how like Christian and like different these guys are. There's a certain line that, you know, that you can't cross when you when you meet somebody from those middle states. And it's like it's a very different animal to what we're used what, to. How did they react? <laughs> like it's just sort of – It was like – it, 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 so, it was silence for a minute. And then the girl was nice enough to sort of cover it and she said – um, she said, Rachel, we're Catholic. Like, <laughs> she's like, uh, but, but whatever, like, denomination they were, it was like nuns could marry or whatever. Oh, Protestant. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Protestant. So it was like, you know, obviously, like, that joke doesn't make sense, but it was just like this awkward. We moved on from yeah, it and, yeah. like, managed, <laughs> yeah, yeah, managed yeah. to steer it away, but it was like, okay, don't broach the subject of religion at all again. Oh, like, you know? It's and, crazy, like... The work partner I had this year. Shout out again, Brian. Uh, Best bloke in the world. <laughs> like, you know how everyone has, like, their Achilles, like, when you get an argument, like, and this bloke's one was, like, his faith, like... And you can do that in Australia and get away with it, but, like, in America, it's, like, a real punch in the guts. I'm like, you know, like... <laughs> You're like it's like on spent Easter with his family and and uh, and Prayers said, said grace and, and that yeah no I went to church and everything with right. him and, and and you know that's I mean I, ca- I ca- grew up so you know what Australian Christians we like, all it's like, yeah. it's like we, oh, we yeah. all went to we all went to <laughs> church it's a casual Christmas Christianity and, yeah exactly it's like, <laughs> I know yeah, the drill. you know you'd have a blunt with God and that's about it you yeah. know so <laughs> but uh, um, yeah they're just it's crazy especially in that Bible Belt like we were sort of talking about it before the podcast like. You know, like they know sex before marriage. That mm. real sort of mm. bubble, and that it's funny you should say like you met a bloke from Nebraska, which means that's that's a that's a rare example because most people you meet out there don't travel at all. Exactly, and that's what these guys were saying about their friends. They're like, yeah. "What are you going to Thailand for?" Like freaking that's out about it. these guys going. They li- going they live in this like, like they just live in this bubble like, and I think that's why we were so confused when. Trump won the election like because as you said we see this Hollywood side of things we see New York we see LA we see the Western States we're the like, NBA and all the rock stars and, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah exactly we, glorified and mm. then all of a sudden these people that aren't represented in the media which is like you know 60, the majority of yeah, yeah. It's, it's that middle it's you know it's the, it's the 400 pound lady on a scooter at Walmart yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. Yeah. Black like, Friday like, fucking yeah. 50 yeah, million yeah. <laughs> 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 but like there's good I got a oh, here's another good story uh 
I was in Rome, Georgia. I'll, I'll see if I can you see if we've got a map up here. If you go near the Georgia Alabama border, uh, uh, down in the uh, what is that southeast? What's the name of the town? Rome, Georgia. So keep going east. Keep going east. Yeah, see Alabama and Georgia down in the corner there? It's like right... Alabama. Right near the border there. It might come up. Zoom in a little bit more. Just to sort of get a perspective of how, like, middle of nowhere this town is. Zoom in a bit more. How long would it take to drive across Alabama? Oh, it's somewhere out, like, LaGrange. Anyway, it's near... It's... I don't even know where it is anyway. Anyway. (laughs) In Georgia? Yeah, it's in Georgia, and uh, anyway, so we're Back at we got this uh, uh, we're at this ge- this Rome Georgia game, and uh, um, they do this. This was before the election. This is last year, so prior to the American election, and Georgia's pretty pretty south. Like, it's probably where the Bible Belt meets the the, the deep south. Yeah. Like Alabama's definitely the deep south. Dirty south. Whereas Atlanta's not so much. Atlanta's more Bible Belt. Like it's still a little bit conser- like uh, liberal rather. Um, but uh, Rome, Georgia is definitely not. It's <laughs> it is redneck territory. And anyway, they they did these presidential races every game, which happens a lot. But what they did in this one, they give the kids a mask, and they had four masks. They had a uh, they had a Bush mask, they had a, a Hillary mask, and Obama mask, and a, uh, a, a Trump, Tr- no Trump mask. Yeah, yeah, Trump mask. And anyway. Um, They'd be like, all right, uh, they put the, the things on the kids and they'd be like, all right, who wants, uh, who wants, uh, who wants Bush to win? And they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. And they'd be like, who wants Obama to win? And then everyone would be like, oh, boo, boo. And they'd be like, who wants Hillary to win? And people would stand up and be like, boo, yeah. fuck Hillary, right. boo, fuck her. <laughs> anyway, and then this one night in particular, like, this is when the election, like, it just started looking like Trump was gaining ground. Like, that sort of time last year. And... This late, this not this on-field announcer. That no, was around this time last year. It was yeah, November well, last year, wasn't yeah. it? November it elections would have been a bit Somewhere of well, yeah. But I remember. I was. It was before the actual elections. It was probably about August, I think. Yeah, and right, right. The, the campaign started. trail. Yeah, the campaign. hype has just right. started. Like, oh shit, he might win. This. Is he closing True. in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and See, uh, I, I, fuck, still, it wasn't still until crazy. the death that I that I was like, shit, maybe, maybe. But yeah. up until that, I was like, no way. Yeah. But yeah, August. And anyway, yeah. So. Uh, and these people on field, they're meant to have, like, it's a sports match, no political alignment. Mm. Anyway, this chick, they go, and who wants our next president of the United States, <laughs> Mr. Donald Trump, to win? And the crowd stand up. They go, they go fucking crazy. Like, yes. they're, yeah. they're like, USA, USA. Oh. They're, like, going nuts. <laughs> anyway, so this stop. kid this night, just by coincidence, the Trump, kid wearing the Trump mask, wins the race. The crowd goes crazy. There's, like... Uh, there's like the kids, the local college kids without the shirts on wearing the Rome Braves on their chest, you know, the R-O-M-E. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, the next like dead set, like three, four minutes, just start chanting, build that wall, build that oh, wall. Really? Build, yeah, just wow. like... What like a, non- as a collective. Yeah, as a collective, like three minutes, like well into the inning. Anyway, the like the Rome Braves team, none of them are from Rome. Like, they're all from mm, all bring over. Ins, yeah. Half of them aren't even American, you know? And so the catcher <laughs> who's in front of me, he's Mexican. <laughs> and I'm oh, like, my God. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, hey, Miguel, I'm like, hey, man, what do you, what do you think of this place? He's like, hey, papi, you got to get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> just like, fuck, <laughs> like everyone on the field, like, you know, that because they're not from Rome, they're just like, this place. Is yeah. yeah. <laughs> that same place, like, redneck as hell. Like, we had a game... The general manager came on the field. Some thunderstorms kicking around at Georgia, and he's like, "Oh, we got some thunderstorms kicking around, but we we should be able to get the game over." I'm like, "Oh, okay, you didn't need to tell me that." He's like, "Oh, no, I came out here to tell you. There's a bloke on the loose, um, just from an armed robbery. You know, he's he's carrying a gun, and the cops are looking for him. He's just beyond the left field fence. But unless he comes on the field, we don't need to stop the game. Like, thanks for clarifying <laughs> yeah. that the the gun wielding guy, if he comes on the field, like the, stop the game. The maniac. Yeah. We've corralled. Like, we've corralled him into the. And game. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but I'm like, why don't we that. stop? Why don't we? You know, why don't we be safe now? He's like, oh, we don't want to do that. I was like, oh, I didn't realize at the time. Then come off the field. I'm thinking, fuck, it's Georgia. It's it's open carry laws. Probably everyone in the stadium's got a fucking gun. Could you imagine if you said, "Hey, we're stopping the game. There's a guy with a gun kicking around." Yeah, It'd be chaos. Yeah. It'd be mm. absolute nuts. Shooting. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There'd be a shooting. It'd be the wrong bloke. And anyway, so yeah, apparently they caught the guy in, in the parking lot outside the stadium. Like, yeah, carrying a gun. It's no. Georgia. Wow. Yeah, just and, crazy. and just some of those areas where he, like you said, 
you know, half the people in the, the place would be armed. You know, like open carry laws and, you know, driving around with sort of... Like there's... Oh, I remember my uncle telling me that there's still places in the States where you can drink and drive. So, like, you can have a beer and drive as long as you're not... Over, over the, the limit, limit yeah. you know? Over 0.08, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, that's more than one state. There's several states yeah. like oh, that. Oh, I bet there's probably plenty, yeah. But... Makes sense. Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I was watching a... Um, I was watching that RBT show last night where they do the... And the yeah. blood drinks are dry. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that one? <laughs> this, dude's, uh, this dude's driving from... Um, I want to say what? Tweed to like Sydney or something like, like Dubbo, that. Dubbo, Dubbo to Sydney or something. Yeah, like doing that. a big yeah, New yeah. South Wales trip, <laughs> and um and has a bottle of uh, has a bottle of bourbon. I can't remember the well, brand. Was it Wild Turkey? Maybe, but he's poured like a whole bunch of Coke into it, and he's basically got that in his lap, like swigging out of this this bourbon and Coke oh, bottle. Oh, done. Cops pull him up, High and um, they're like, he's like, oh, I didn't realize you. Couldn't um you couldn't have an open open container or whatever and they're like mate you can't just be drink- like, drinking like what, what are you drinking for the wheel, mate. <laughs> yeah exactly and um and this guy's like eyes are bugging out of his fucking head man like and he had actually done it like they sort of gin around for a little while do the do the breath test twice blow zero they're like something's not right here and um and get him out of the car his his eyes are just like pupils dilated to the absolute nine <laughs> and he'd obviously gone red herring spec like thought he could throw him off like and, and I, I can't remember was it like speedy tested positive no for? they didn't he, they got him to do they didn't have a drug testing kit oh. and remember they were just like all right we just need you to walk in a straight line walks in a perfect straight line all right touch your nose and so passes everything oh they did and one the of cop, those. This, this big fat burly cop he's like well, shit, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, well, I can't keep you. They like, had to let him go. Done, they've done, like, everything they could. They're just like, well, something's not right, but we're going to have to let you go. Fuck, yeah. he was gassed yeah. up to the nines, yeah. man, like 100%. Just That's Is that, do they do that in the States instead of get you to blow on a bag? You do the silly fucking Roadside walk sobriety. in a straight line thing? Now you, I to, know to, I... <laughs> to not pass one of those things, you've got to be absolutely mute. Like, think about, you know, if you've had... Six beers, I don't know. Unless you're, unless you've got terrible balance, you should be able to like, you know, stand on one foot with your with your finger on your nose and do the alphabet. Yeah, after, like after six after a six like, pack, like you said, yeah. you'd have to drink a fair bit to lose the, the yeah, motor skills exactly. to be able to perform that task. Fucking hell, the most hectic fucking drink driving on the highway that I've witnessed last Friday night, driving from Brisbane down to the Gold Coast, probably somewhere around like Logan or something. This small sort of like shitty old Ford laser hatchback type thing in the in the slow lane, just basically going like coming out into the next lane and, and jamming on the brakes and swerving this way and that way, driving super erratic, sped up to get past him because I was just like, fuck this, I don't want to be behind this guy. He's like looking like he could hit a guard wall and then just come flinging out oh, like at any given moment. Look back and, <coughs> excuse me, he's wearing like a, like one of those, um, not quite high vis, but like the mining shirts, you know, with the blue and blue and yellow or whatever, and is Busy. visibly fucking mute, man. Like with the window down, just like struggling to keep his eyes open, struggling to hold on to the oh. wheel. And I was just like, you fucking selfish yeah. prick, man. <laughs> like <laughs> just just like a, a fucking loaded Uzi just yeah. flying down the highway, yeah. ready to fucking injure Take whoever, man. Out. And yeah. the terrible thing is, is we've all done it. Or at least, you know, like me and all my friends have done it, I can I can definitely say. Is that Throwing it, yourself under the bus. Absolutely. Is that I... I, I, I don't think... I, like, I, I've definitely... I've, I've been caught before um, I, I, just over the limit, like over 0.05, but never would I have driven a car when I'm like, you know, you see some of these RBT shows and people are like three, four times the legal yeah. limit. Never, ever would ah, I have. True. Like, if, if I had, you know, potentially gone... Two beers in my last hour instead of, you know, one or whatever I was meant to have, like maybe marginally over. But I think there's got to be a certain point where you realised, hey, no, I'm fucking way too pissed to be operating a car yeah, right now. I think uh, norm, like normal people should have that filter, you know. Totally, totally. And then that's just common sense too. Like the only real time that I can probably remember being really, really legless is, um, is just driving from a mate's house to home where it was pretty much... Tuesday night. Like. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was pretty much like five or six streets. So, you know, like it would have been the equivalent distance of about, you know, two, three minutes in the car. But it was just 
to the stage of when you got when I got to the you know like to out the front of the house, pretty much parked the car and like opened the door and that just fell out onto like the curbside and no. sort of had to pick myself up and then went out in the morning and looked at how I'd parked the car and it was just mm. totally like on an on an angle. Jordan Belfort, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. staring no. down the barrel of a five year. And, and, sort and, of thing. and I feel rightfully so, man. Like that guy, if he, you know, it seems crazy that there's guys sitting in jail cells for, for drink driving when there's, you know, pedophiles and murderers and rapists next door to them. But it is seriously a fucking loaded gun when you get in a car. Sure, like definitely. we've seen, you know, just this week there was another car attack fucking... Uh, Manhattan. Where, Manhattan, yeah. And like that shit is a fucking weapon, man. You don't realise just how fucking dangerous it is traveling in a car at speed you know you're in this metal box fucking hurtling down a concrete patch with all these mm. other m- metal boxes you know in close proximity and you and you're going over 100 kilometers per hour that's your you know flimsy bag of bones and skin that's going 100 kilometers as well you, th- you think you're not because you're in this capsule of a car or whatever but your body is actually hurtling through space at, at mm. that amount of fucking and that's what gets you speed. into fatalities a lot of the times as I well think about because it's your, your organs moving around yeah like your organs all rupture because of the force like. exactly i think it's good here because it's it is kind of taboo like you yeah. like oh fuck i drove home last night mm. i was having like you wouldn't say that to anyone but your best mates whereas in the states they're pretty Fucking blase about it. Like it's point oh eight. Yeah, point oh eight, exactly. It's three it's it's a like bit more blurred. Like higher. here you're like, oh, I can have two beers, but fuck, if I have any more than that in an hour, I'm yeah. really sort of running a risk. Mm. Yeah. Whereas point oh eight, you know, make it's it like obviously three beers in your first hour and yeah, then probably one depending and, on how yeah. heavy you are yeah, and yeah. like it, it's yeah. so much more blurred at point oh eight. And they don't like the amount of people over there, obviously not like we get a drink driving thing, we're done. Like, no mm. chance. We just get kicked out of the country. Or I would get kicked out of the country. But, um, like... Really? He, for a DD? Well, we... Well, Canada we have, have fucking zero tolerance. Like, you can't get into Canada on a holiday visa if, right. if, you, yeah. if you've if you had any drink driving charge. Because in the, in, is I, it in the last... In a decade or something? Uh, they, they, well, basically, I had two low-range charges because in Australia, when you're on your provisional license, you have to be completely zero. So I had an instance where I'd blown like 0.04 or something like that. And so technically, I was under the legal limit for Australia and um, and the second time was like 0.075 or something like that. So I was able to, with my application for a visa, write a letter basically explaining that, you know, both of my charges were under what you consider the legal limit. So, like, given the, you know, differences in our in our systems, w- was able to get in. But if, you, if you'd if you had, like, you know, a recent high-range drink driving charge, you can't get into Canada. Yeah, same you know? in the state. Like, they're so strict about their work wow. visas. Over and there. obviously with your job and everything, well, it'd be... Well, any guy couldn't keep a job for an umpire. If you've had a DUI at all in the past yeah. because they give you rental cars yeah. and the rental car company, if you've had a DUI on your record, no, nah, no yeah. chance. So you don't get hired if you've got a DUI and you see guys get released. There's always one or two every year that, yeah. no, you know, I, they'll... Yeah. I popped, I'm done. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, but yeah, like so stringent about the work visas in the States because everyone would want to work. That's why everyone goes on a working holiday in Canada. Like you, you worked, in, when I was in the Northwest League, you'd be in Seattle and there'd be nothing but Americans in Seattle and then you'd drive an hour up the border to Vancouver and it's like you're in a, like I know you're in a different country yeah. but like just everyone from all over the world, you hardly meet a Canadian in yeah. Vancouver. I mean, no, it's you distinct. blokes have been there, like it's, it's crazy and then, but it because is. it's so hard to work in Seattle, it's like, mm. mate, like, it's so, uh, it is such a, Contrast where you go from Vancouver, where it feels everyone's bouncing around friendly. You smell weed everywhere you go. Yeah. Like everyone, sat, it was a real sort of like friendly town where I, I could see myself living there. If um, you know, if I could choose somewhere else to live in the world, I, Vancouver would be on the list for sure. And um, drive drive down to Seattle, like was it three hours away or something like that? Yeah, I can't remember. And, um, yeah, pretty close. And you just go, oh shit, this is different. Mm. Like, got picked by a homeless dude on the first night there, yeah. like. He said something to me And I was like Ah it's all good man He was like I'll be waiting for you Motherfucker Like as I'm going In my hostel I wake up in the morning With like Hungover as fuck Like Hey Brad Is that guy going to be out there yeah. <laughs> uh, Let's go buy some weed yeah. <laughs> I remember one that's, night that's in, uh, the sort of advice You want to get in, <laughs> Excuse me I remember one night good In friend, LA Going from um, 
I guess it was like Torrance train station, but um, around the, the, the beach area there, Hermosa, Manhattan sort of area, and catching a train like through downtown and everything, had to change trains at Long Beach and shit to get out to Pasadena for a, for a, um, and a gig at Pasadena, the Ice House. Pasadena, baby. See Joey Diaz and shit live. <laughs> it was fucking, it was like worth it. But I remember like changing trains at Long Beach and standing on the platform and it was just like, I need to have my full fucking wits about me here, you know, like because there is just that different tangible sort of fucking energy in the air that you're like, this is, this is very (laughs) different to where I'm from, you know, it's not Petri. And it is like, it is like you say, you know, drink driving or guns or anything like that. It's sort of, in Australia, that kind of stuff has become taboo. Like, I don't think it's been that way for a very long time. We're probably like, you know, only a couple of generations away from where drink driving just would have been the complete norm. Yeah. But um, but I guess the States is just a totally different animal when you're dealing with that many more fucking people. And like, you know, we've got a map of the States up here at the moment. And I think the... Is it the continental USA? Like the, the 52 states or whatever... Are um, forty eight yeah. states <laughs> are um, are like you know the, are around about the same land mass size as Australia, but you you don't have to drive fucking three hours west or east from either either coastline in Australia to get nothing and just like fucking miles and miles of outback like as far as you can go. Whereas the states, that's all full of fucking people and towns, you know. So mm. it, it's natural that you just you're gonna have those areas where. You know, it's just fucking wild, wild west. Like yeah, our yeah. big cities, like if you were to have Brisbane in the US, the metropolitan area, it would be. I think it's the fifth, the fifth. No, it's the fifth. It'd be the fifth biggest city in America. Like they have so many of these like cities, small clusters. Not, yeah, yeah true. but not massive. You know, like apart from it's. I think it's New York, LA, Chicago, Houston, and then it just drops off like what massively. would like the population of like columbus ohio or something like that be uh Fuck. it's not that it wouldn't be that big like columbus blue what jacket. about uh rome georgia <laughs> <laughs> mate probably rome georgia hundred, compare rome georgia to uh, an australian oh, city like size maybe, wise oh, i'd be smaller than Redcliffe. it'd probably be maybe uh, bean league 36 000. yeah oh, bean yeah. league <laughs> mate, there's way more people live in Bean Lee than that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right. It's, it's like a quarter of a million. But that's a city. And this is the thing. There's 36,000. Like Logan, Logan Shire or something mm, like there's that. There's 36,000 yeah. people there. And because there's nothing in the city, like the Rome Braves games, they'll get 6,000 every night. Like it's it's incredible because that's all there is to do. Yeah, they just, shit. shit, we'll go sink piss on a Tuesday there. You know, like, see so what Rome, I mean? Like, Rome, Georgia, the, the 2006 estimate was um, 36,000. And Logan City... 2006 estimation. 10 times bigger. 300,000. Yeah. That's crazy. Shit. That's what I mean. Like, if Sydney was a city in America, I think it'd be the fourth, it's the fourth biggest art after uh, New York, LA, Chicago. Yeah, right. So, same, and Melbourne and Brisbane, I think they would be fifth and, like, fifth and sixth. It's crazy that there's so many cities in America, but there's only really, like, by comparison. A couple of majors. Mega yeah. cities, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of flyover states, you mm. know, as they say, so... <laughs> You ever um, been in a hurricane? Yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, last I've had year, a rough year for that. Oh, just terrible. And it's like, yeah, like so reactive. Like, mm. as we said before, like Tully got hit and then they're like, oh, shit, let's build a cyclone yeah. shelter. And, you know, like, but I was in a hurricane in um, Columbia, South Carolina last year and we had... Tobacco Road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mad. But oh, great, great little city though. Uh, South University of South Carolina out there. Go Gamecocks. Yeah, yeah Gamecocks. Like, what a name for oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go, Cox. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> but uh, only place in America you yell that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, three days we just bunk. Well, definitely one full day just bunkered down in the hotel and it just it just rained a, a shitload. Like. Mm. Um, they're pretty used to it out there, sort of that area. They get hit by hurricanes on a yearly basis. It'd be like living in, you know, North Queensland or Broome or something like yeah. that. So, why do, why don't we get to, to tangent? But it's sort of on that weather vein. Why don't we get um, tornadoes here? Don't Does know. We need we need a proper meteorologist. Yeah. But yeah, something to do with. Well, mate, you'll find that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I when think the, when the precipitation, <laughs> it would be something relative to that, no though, for sure. Well, well, yeah, where we get yeah. cyclones, it's to do with like the temperature of ocean currents and like mm. m- like hot ocean currents meeting fucking cold winds or whatever. So Australia, obviously, being in the lower part of the hemisphere, would have different temperature 
currents to to what the Americas have, so they're more sort of conducive to getting that sort of that'd be, natural that'd phenomena. That'd be some crazy shit to 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 witness firsthand, like being one of those storm chasers. Mm. Yeah. So you twi- isn't it weird? Like, yeah. Isn't it weird how there's something? I wonder if it's a modern thing. How I don't know if, if you guys would agree, but there's something exciting about a storm. There's almost something like sexy about it. Some it's energy like, to it. Yeah. yeah, you know, and it's and it's kind of like I guess it maybe it's the ultimate like. 2017 comfortable life privilege that you're like, ooh, there's a storm outside. Yeah. Like, let's fucking <laughs> 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 like net, net, Netflix and lightning yeah. sort of thing, you know? Like, yeah. fucking. But if you were to go back to tribal days, like, surely that's like, holy fuck, this is really bad. Yeah. Like, and although but, maybe there's that aspect that's like, this brings rain, so yeah. it's a good thing as well. That's but, true. It'd definitely have that element. But it, but it's, it's funny, those fucking storm chasers, man. Like, they are people who obviously get a rock hard dick over storms, yeah. you know? Yeah. They're like, let's we're go dr- into the eye, yeah. but this we're driving fucking straight crazy. Like, like, oh, here it comes. Let's go to it. Like, oh, fuck mm, that. Yeah. Mm. Like, twisters and things like that were in like Tornado Alley in America. Uh, that w- It would be fucking terrifying, that shit. Especially like, living in a fucking trailer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. You know, like, just yeah. ha- having that stuff bearing down on you and you would need those sort of those sheltered community shelters or whatever where you know like everybody flocks at the last minute and you, you know you goes and underground two and dominican mates just, bunk it down. <laughs> 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 just ride it out literally uh, the, the crazy thing about those ones <laughs> <laughs> oh, the crazy thing about tornadoes is they're gone pretty quickly or at least they are on the movies at least <laughs> <laughs> At least on that movie Twister seemed yeah. to be. They, they wrapped that up in, in like an hour yeah. 20. <laughs> that F5 was there and gone. Like. <laughs> oh, mate, confession oh, about that, yeah. that yeah. Mate, about that movie, that was some of my first ever... David um, Duchovny and Helen Hunt? Yeah, well, it was my first sort of <laughs> attraction to women as well was in that. I remember her being in, in, in a white singlet in that. Like, Interesting. I'm like, am I around that? Like, <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I'm like, right what... There. What do I like? Mad about you? Yeah, no. Should oh, we get into that? No, a bit young, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, she Mur- that, Murphy yeah. Brown. Hello. Mate, look, can you look up Helen Hunt Twister on that? <laughs> We're deep down the rabbit hole now. <laughs> <laughs> We're on to Google Wessie. We're on to. <laughs> <laughs> Look we hung in there for an hour, mate. T- but. Talking about you, you, you getting a rage of first up on the <laughs> Helen Hutton yeah, twister. Are you sure it wasn't the twister? 1996. Yeah. No, so is this it, is. There she is in the singlet in the cargo. All right, so there. do the math on this. How old was Bryce when he first started getting attracted to chicks? Eight. <laughs> yeah. Eight. My so dog. That's where, that's My where dog. It, it is natural. You don't choose your sexuality no, to the yeah. point where. I liked looking at that at eight years old and I had no idea why. Oh, yeah. they did like the... But you bet the, your ass I do now. The wet, <laughs> <laughs> the wet T-shirt, yeah. um, nipples in the white singlet. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It all makes sense now. Yeah, yeah nice. bro. I remember like... Oh, a, here, we go. Go. here yeah. we go. Somebody yeah. screenshotted it. There go. Yeah, there See? you go. I remember this... Um, I this, still like looking this, this guy <laughs> telling... <laughs> <laughs> this, this mate of mine telling me, um, t- telling me one night that he thought he was gay and that he had to... Um, he went to the the family, which is a nightclub in Brisbane, and was gonna like push another dude to like um, to test find out, test the waters, sort of thing. And he rec- rem- like recalls like pushing this dude and just oh. feeling like the feeling of like beard rubbing up against his face and shit. And it was just like, nah, nah, I'm straight. And I just remember thinking like. I wouldn't need to feel that to know that I was straight. You know, like, yeah, I, yeah. I, like, some people are just, you know, you obviously just if you're gay, you're you're like you're just orientated that way. If you're straight, you're just orientated yeah. a different there's, way. There's this yeah. new show on. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it. Netflix uh, called Big Mouth, and it's about these. Uh, like I think it's it's trending right now. It's it's right, pretty popular okay. and. Uh, it's about like the teenagers going through, you know, puberty and whatnot, and it's a bit of light take on it. And it's one bloke's just like fapping off one day, like he's going through like the spank bank and whatnot, and all of a sudden, Vin Diesel pops up and he's and he, and he comes, and he's like, "Fuck, am I gay? Like, what, what's going on?" And, you know, like, and does the same thing, like tries to pass it in. He's like, well, "No, that didn't. That's not. I'm not yeah. gay." Yeah. yeah, I actually, uh, I worked a, a landscape labouring job for this dude one time, and he was. Uh, he was like 37 and uh, just, I don't know, like a, a bit of a strange customer, but like just very fucking honest. And he used to say, and this is like I'm, I'm labor hire crew, like, you know, absolute, absolute stranger. That not, not that he was opening up and having a deep and meaningful, but just completely nonchalant about, yeah, I sucked a dick once. Yeah, I was fucking... <laughs> <laughs> it was like... It was like 
I went through a period, thought I might be gay, fucking sucked a dick. I know it wasn't for me. Like, I'm, I'm not gay. <laughs> like, and it was just like, yeah, like fucking. How, how long ago? Like, yeah. how long into that I do think you realise? Uh, so you're like, fuck, I've committed now. Yeah. Like, yeah, I better finish the job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll be a yeah. good bloke. I'll finish it. But he was like, he was like 37 and he was saying that, you know, he had sucked a dick at 19 or whatever, like going through a confused state and stuff like that. But, you know, just, I just, you got to admire that honesty, you know, mm. just to fucking. Man, he's yeah. comfortable in his own skin, man. Hats yeah. exactly. off to the bloke. Yeah, exactly. You've, you've comfortable, yeah. comfortable and, enough and to share. And everybody would probably know somebody who, whether you're aware of it or not, had probably done that. You know, like I mean, it d- depends on obviously the. Well, people that's what I think. Around, like you know, is what's so uh, yeah. like blurry sort of lines about sexuality. Like we say, you know, you, you're born a certain way and you're either fucking A, B, C, D category, but that's kind of what we're seeing now is like, fuck, it doesn't seem to be... The spectrum. ...that black and white. There is yeah. such a fucking spectrum there of, you, you know, and and I think we're only getting fucking weirder as we get more and more modern. Like you watch that Rocco Sofridi documentary on, on there's, there's one for you. Netflix and that's somebody who's like, you know, fucking, what is he, fifth? 40, 48. 48 or 48. something. That's somebody who's like, you know, generations older than us. But he's, for anybody who doesn't know, he's an Italian porn star, like quite quite well known for not like, he, well, yes, definitely extreme hardcore, Rough, but like yeah. there, there's there's more hardcore things out there than than his stuff, but it's pretty fucking hardcore. He was um, the first, uh, so I've first, heard. First, male <laughs> porn, first male porn star to spit on a woman on camera in like a major production, not some right. like underground ah. stuff sort of thing. He's like, I want to see, I want to see everyone in this, in my films pushed to the limit. Shit yeah. Like that. So <laughs> yeah. I, but the doco's yeah. fucking interesting because you've got this 48 year old aging porn star who's sort of like, am I too old? Like I should probably get out of this game. Complex. Because all the girls that he's, you know, getting fed by these different fucking Agencies. gross Hollywood fucking porn agent guys that, you know, are, are some grotesquely ugly dude that's been involved in the porn industry for so long and, like, these 19-year-old girls just looking to get rich and famous and shit straight up and just willing to do the most outlandish shit because that's been the norm from day dot. Like, you know, they've they've grown up with the internet. So, like, people of our generation can <laughs> can sort of remember the fact when the internet came in. So it was like... I still remember my first porn experiences were Playboy magazines, you know, keeping a fucking Playboy magazine in a, in a waterproof sleeve, like under the swing set down the park sort of thing. Like, whereas kids these days, they're like, they've got access to the most fucking crazy explicit sexual content from such a young age that these 19 and 20 year old chicks are coming along and an opportunity like fucking having sex with Rocco Sofredi comes along and they're just fucking, you know, there's no defining that sexuality. It's mm. so fucking outlandish and just like any which way you want it, fucking I'll do girls, boys, fucking, yeah. you know, it's 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 crazy. Like, and I think it's only getting fucking crazier, man. Real dolls and shit like mm. that. So many of those docos on Netflix is just fuck the the human, the human. I guess it's I guess it's as old as time, though. Way eh? like we've seen so many different cultures. I think we've talked about it on one of the real early episodes, but like ancient greek culture like sexual norms were so fucking different it was like you know pedophilia wasn't wasn't considered pedophilia it was like a completely normal fucking thing to to bring a young man the romans into his sexual into his sexual awakening like you know like slave slave sex boys and stuff like that it's just like all sorts mm, yeah like homosexuality yeah 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 yeah. 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 keep going keep going (laughs) (laughs) i'm nearly there man (laughs) (laughs) yes yeah i guess you're right it's it's a culture thing Mm. you know like and you know sort of touching on like being exposed to it from such an early age like you you become so saturated with what is extreme and Mm. i think your brain's wired to like you know, that, that adrenaline, you know, of trying something new. And if you fucking mm. see it, it's like, oh, well, what it, what else is there? And then you go, you, it's like a next level thing. Exactly. Like, and so you're right, like, it's so different to what it would be, you know, 10, 20 years Absolutely. ago. And it changes all the time. Like, you know, getting a gobby was um, bloody a big deal. taboo in the 60s, you know, so w- you wouldn't even... Well, the big like thing, an eye now. big thing on Instagram now across all the colleges. With have you seen um, arse eating season? Have you seen that? Like that's a big <laughs> no. hashtag across colleges. Where no. you, please you tell me about this? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly right, man. Where everyone's like joking about eating ass and stuff like that. Back when we we're in high school, man, if you had told someone that you ate, <laughs> their, if you licked their ass, it's probably 
no one was doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, you, you, but you it becomes you didn't, what, it yeah, becomes, what's wrong with you? But yeah, yeah. But, the, the, but now it's the just term like, eating ass becomes viral yeah. and it becomes social norm. That's you know? right, it, for sure. It just filters mm. down, and that's like, oh yeah, fucking ate her ass. Rah, rah. Kanye yeah. West puts it in a fucking lyric, mm. and all of a sudden, it's it's you know, dude's dropping like regular. flies with E. coli. <laughs> 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 Some that uh, us <laughs> at the knockoff know well. Shout out, Agbo. Two top, two top. <laughs> <laughs> he, de- he defended that title. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Speaking of titles, we're on the crest of UFC 217 from Madison Square Garden this Sunday. Three title fights on the one card. It's stacked to the eyeballs. A couple of fun fights and a few bad blood matches in there as well. Like the three three that we should preview is Joanna Yanjacek defending her belt against Rose Nami Yunus at one, is she 115 pounds? 115, yeah. yeah. 115. I think, look, Ro- Rose is very, very crafty and always getting better, but I just don't think anyone can beat Joanna in a, in a fight at the moment. I think over the space of five rounds, she's got the, the stand-up and the technique to probably decision Rose. I don't think she's yeah. finish her. I think that'll be a, a five-round decision. Uh, Wonderboy Thompson, Jorge Masvidal on that card too Ooh. is probably one that deserves a mention as well. Wonderboy coming off... One of the most boring fights of all time in the in the Woodley Wonderboy two outcome. But what's your predictions here, man? I hope I I love Jorge Masvidal and have for a while. He always comes to bring it. Masvidal was in like thirty two and the 12. original. That's a uh, fucking. He's a veteran, man. He was in as record. like he was an eighteen year old in like the Kimbo Slice backyard videos and stuff in Florida, and he's sort of. Cuban guy, but just made his way to the top now, and it just brings it every time. Real I'll, good stand up fighter. I like him better at seventy two. Like I, I think that you know, although he obviously had a lot of success at fifty five, I think it, you know that one hundred seventy pound division is good Definitely. for him. He and looks I, fucking jacked. Yeah. Exactly. I stacked his fucking one seventy now. Oh, <laughs> so deep, man. I reckon it's it's hands down the deepest division in the UFC. It's getting there. Good, like new blood coming through. Like yeah. we've, yeah. we've seen. It with, needs it. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it needs it. It's yeah. sort of what was that tweet you fucking Dana. Dana being the ultimate promoter, and he's just doing his job, really, where he's like, this would be our biggest year yet, don't you worry. 2017. And, uh, but yeah, in terms of 2017, but... Paper, Ariel paper, Hawani yeah, he, tweeted, he, like, uh, it's yet to determine what was quantifying biggest big, year yeah. sort of thing, like, because as far as financials and... and Money, like, pay-per-view numbers, it's been a real slow slow year to have John Jones come back and then just bail straight out. He's, mm. His pay-per-view versus DC, his... DC did 880,000 buys. And that's the biggest that they've had this year where Whitaker versus Yoel, I don't think they cracked 300. Right. Yeah, that, that's a, yeah. And I think Amanda Nunez versus um, Valentina on that previous one, I think might have done 120,000 buys. That would be gotcha. – that's a fucking disaster. And Connor hasn't Eddie, fought in the UFC no, this year, Exactly obviously. right. Yeah. So yeah. when he comes back in, they'll crack that million buys. But until then, John was the ace in their sleeves. Yeah, so and they got they no really, ace. They yeah. really need to uh, – Have you seen he started – uh, Getting active on his social media again. John, mm. yeah, cryptic tweets about religion and like, mm. I see the impossible and all this sort of shit. I'm like, yeah. No, yeah, it's it's Fuck it's off. quite sa- you know? it's yeah. quite yeah. souring at yeah. this point. Honestly, mate, of, yeah. I'm yeah. salty on him. Yeah. I, I, I'm totally with you, man. I'm 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 done with that. You know, like just man, own being a fucking prick. Yeah, like, seriously, just come out and own it, yeah. rather than just hide behind this facade of religion when yeah. you're obviously just out there. Gang banging and do, yeah, doing partying yeah, yeah, and shit. Exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Like own that. Like no one's gonna care if he came out and owned that. Every, I think everyone would embrace him even more. Where yeah, I just feel like uh, it, you know all of that fucking time and dedication and shit like that. As silly as it sounds, as a fan mm-hmm. to somebody, and then just to be continually let down to the point where you're like, fuck, I don't know if any of these any of these victories were legit. It's sort of like, uh, well, I, I'm not actually interested in seeing you fight anymore that's because right. it's like I that's feel where, like it's a. That's where roids with baseball that comes into the into play massively, where you've got guys now who have got question marks over their careers, although they do still have. Like, are they in the Hall of Fame and stuff? Well, that, Some of these, that's the thing. I think like they haven't disqualified them from the Hall of Fame, but right. Even no one, they've put them as cheated. Mark, yeah. Mark McGuire. Well, what's happened uh, is the Hall of Fame's voted, and none of the. They all think it's morally wrong, so no one's voted them in. So all these people like Mark McGuire, who holds the home run who record, wants to see me suck some dingers. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know yeah. Roger Clemens, or I mean, pretty much anyone on that. You know, Simpsons, the Simpsons, Simpsons episode, <laughs> you know, we all, like Daryl Strawberry, dead set, like <laughs> yeah, dead set, like half of them. That was the era of roids in baseball. Yeah. They're just not going to let them in. 
Yeah. yeah. Jose yeah. Canseco. Oh, like, these but big units, mate. I mean, yeah. He, <laughs> he, he admitted to it. He yeah. wrote a book, made millions about that's it. That's right. So, right. Yeah. yeah. So that's where you can embrace it. And people are like, yeah, that's good for him. Where Garbrandt Dillashaw. I've got TJ. Oh, I've got really? TJ. Oh, I do, man. I mate, do. Th- that is the main event for me. I think yeah. that is an, just a, such a sensational fight that... You know, really isn't getting as much press as... Ex, ex-training partners who had a terrible falling out. Now they've gone and yeah. talked all sorts of shit about each other. Drug accusations, like gym bullying accusations. Like they've thrown so much mud at each other. I just can't help but think Cody with that back injury that he had can't be understated. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know how much time he had off after winning that belt against Dom Cruz. Like that performance against Cruz was one for the ages where no one's done that to Dom, but... Mm. Alpha male had prepared for Dom, what, five times? Yeah. So Cody was there on the right on the right end of that. So he's probably prepared five camps helping out Uriah fight Dom, helping um, TJ was it, did he fight? Yeah. yeah. So absolutely. They, they, they all would have worked together trying to replicate that style. So I think he had his had it down, but I, I can't go past TJ in this one. For some reason it's just yeah, yeah. it's him for me. Maybe in a, a <laughs> close five round decision, perhaps. Mate, I I, I know TJ's got the footwork too, but that that Footwork that that Cody had in that in that Dom Cruz fight, you know, like I mean, there is not too many people that can hang with Dom Cruz in terms of footwork, and Cody pretty much outworked him and clowned you know? him, clowned like him was, in he, some quite some a bit instances. of showboating and oh, stuff. Oh man, eleven and zero, and for that weight, he can crack. So. He can throw huge bombs. He has huge power, you know, way more power than um, than TJ with that one shot. But yeah, that that'll be an outstanding matchup mm. either way. No one's going to dominate that fight. I can't see it. Going that way, I think it's got to just be a an all out war of attrition that's that's close. It could be one of the best fights you've ever seen. Oh, it's definitely. Got potential it's, for that. It's it really does. That's what's exciting. But, um, really high caliber people. Main event: the return of George Rush St Pierre. I'm excited, oh, man. Me too. Man. Yeah, me I too. mean, it, it's Look, been it's been a long time, and but it's got all the makings of a potential snoozer in, in all yeah, reality. But it does. George is back, so it's when MMA wasn't cool. He was yeah. the, he was the man. Like he was yep. he was one of the faces. Of it as it really started to blow up. Definitely, so. when he went out, he was pretty much the biggest star for sure of, of his time, and that that's why Dana was so dark on you know him stepping yeah. away is yeah. because Dana really threw him like, under the bus it was a real fuckhead. Absolutely, to him after it was that. a real dickhead. Yeah. It was a real dickhead at the time when he had sort of fought Johnny Hendricks and and stepped away and you know said he was taking some time off because he was having some head issues. And Four years a long time off. It is, yeah. yeah. Bisping, Bisping, granted, he's had a little bit of time off now, but he's been active. Like he's yeah. gone on. A, Luke Rockhold, Dan Henderson, Anderson Silva. Like, if he beats GSP here, fuck man, he honestly that those names on his resume yeah. that he can get. Yeah, he has to go. Like, he's instant Hall of Fame. Like, he's got more wins in the UFC right yeah. now than anyone else ever has. Yep, more significant strikes than anyone ever. Thirty-one has. and seven. Yeah, for the like, count. Mate, he went fifteen and zero at light heavyweight, so he's a big middleweight. Does he I keep? Think, does he keep fighting if he beats GSP? And he come here? out and said he wants to fight Rob. He's like, there's an interim champ here right now. Like, we'll need to squash that. Yeah, and, and then I'll go. Probably. You, you'll absolutely. He might leave Rockhold hanging. You'll you'll see. I reckon Bisping go until he loses that strap. I think he'll, he's happy to. I reckon my take on it is he's happy to go out on a loss because he realizes right. that every single one of those title fights big is paycheck. the big big paycheck. And he's a smart dude. And and as soon as he gets beat. You know, it'll be like, hey, you know, thank you very much for the memories I've gone and out he's, on. He said a couple of times too in the lead up, he's like, you fuckers will miss me when I'm gone, and it will be. One yeah. Of those yeah. You'll probably be more appreciated once he finishes. Hall of up, Famer for sure, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Ha- has yeah. to be. If you're Ryan Faber's in the fucking Hall of Famer, yeah, yeah. Bisping dead gets right. His ass. And Bisping came up from Ultimate Fighter, yeah? Yeah, he, yeah, won, he did. won tough three, three yeah. at 205. Yeah, so that's right. Three. Yeah. And we're probably up to what now, like 30? 26. Yeah. 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 It's, mate, it's cooked now, though. <laughs> but great, great card Sunday. Plenty of Rugby League World Cup action. On this weekend as well, might uh, Westy. Thanks for your time, mate. Great having you on. Appreciate you taking time out of your Friday night. I know you had baseball opportunities tonight, so nah, cheers. This love way, love this the is body. This is way more fun than doing that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been wicked, man. Thank you. Not yeah, me. thanks for joining us, and uh, we shall see you in a week. We'll lock something down. Absolutely. It's all love, people. Stay good. Peace. <laughs>